Hello everyone, welcome back to our lesson. So for today's lesson, we are going to go into module 8B where we are going to learn on how to write a report. You can find this lesson on page 122 until 123. The learning objective for today's lesson will be focusing on writing skill 4.2.4 where you need to use formal and informal registers appropriate to the target audience in most familiar situations by first writing five passive voice sentences and second writing a report with appropriate use of language. Alright, before we begin with our lesson, let's discuss these two questions first. Alright, let's read them together. First one, do the students at your school publish a school magazine or newspaper? If yes, what is it like? If not, would you like your school to have one? Okay. You can write your answer for this question in the comment section below, alright? So I will try to answer this uh, as a capacity of a student at the school that I'm teaching. Right, so do the students in your school publish a school magazine or newspaper? Yes, they do, the school magazine. So the first one, yes, they do publish school magazine. If yes, what is it like? Well, it is um, informative and also interesting. If not, would you like your school to have one? Yes, of course. That would be great for everybody. Also, some of the students could practice their you know, writing skill, their uh, teamwork, their photo editing skills, their, you know, the skills that you would use if you were, uh, if you work in a newspaper or a magazine company. Let's move on to task B. Read the writing task below and underline the keywords. All right, this is the writing task. Your school publishes the monthly magazine Shine in the Dark. The head teacher of your school has asked students to write a report on the magazine and suggest in what ways it can be improved. So the title of your school magazine is Shine in the Dark. And the head teacher of your school has asked students to write a report on the magazine and suggest in what ways it can be improved. Okay, let's highlight the keywords. write a report write a report and suggest what ways it can be improved bear in mind that this magazine is published monthly okay by your school and the title is shine in the dark all right okay now let's do task c Think about the writing task, this one, and answer the questions. Choose A or B. Okay, the first one. Who are you writing the report for? Is it for a peer or is it for a superior? Peer here means uh, the people around your age or you can call them your friends. Um, superior here means uh, the teachers. Um, or you can, people would normally say their boss. La. Basically, people with a, a higher authority than you. So, let's look at the second sentence here. The head teacher of your school has asked students, meaning that a lot of students, to write a report on the magazine that the school publishes and suggests what ways it can be improved. So, who asked you to do this? Who asked the students to do this? The head teacher so the answer for number one is a superior because your the head teacher of your school asks students to write a report so that she or he can learn about uh, the students suggestions on how the magazine can be improved okay all right the next one number two why are you 
writing it? Is it A, to discuss why the magazine is not successful? Or is it B, to recommend how to make the magazine better? So in the instruction here, is there any part of this instruction that you see saying the magazine was unsuccessful? No, right? So definitely not A. So the answer is B. It is to recommend how to make the magazine better. Ways it can be improved. Okay, it carries both of this carries the same meaning. Right, number three, what style should it be written in? Is it should should it be written in formal or informal style? So when writing a report, should you write in a formal or informal language style? Yes, it should be in formal. Okay. You use informal language style when you write an email or a postcard. Go, you know, something that you write to your friends or your peers. But since this is a report you write for your superior, which is your, the head teacher, so the language style should be formal. All right, now let's do the next task, which is task D. Now read the report below. Okay, this is the report. Uh, and choose the appropriate heading for each paragraph. So these are the headings. There are one, two, three, four, five headings to be inserted into these five blank spaces. Okay, so let's look at the headings one by one. The first one is student involvement, meaning uh, penglibatan pelajar. Second one is becoming digital. Uh, menjadi ataupun menuju ke arah lebih kepada high tech lah. Uh, the third one is conclusion, kesimpulan. The fourth one is introduction, pendahuluan. The fifth one is new features, ciri-ciri uh, terbaru. Okay. So this report is to Abang Osman Masagus, the head teacher of SMK Green Road, and is written by Paul Abidin. The subject or the topic is Shine in the Dark. Okay, do you still remember where do we see this title from? Shine in the Dark? Yes, it's from right here. The title of the monthly magazine of the school. Okay, number one. Which heading is going to be suitable to be put as the first heading? Okay. This report focuses on some aspects of our school magazine, Shine in the Dark, which need to be improved in order to update it and make it more appealing. Appealing here means more interesting, lah, more attractive or in Malay we can say lebih menarik, lebih menarik perhatian, ha, something like that. So, as usual, when we are writing, the first paragraph is usually the... So, as usual, uh, when we are writing, the first paragraph is usually the introduction. So, the heading for the first paragraph is introduction. All right. Now, the second one, it is a fact that the internet has changed the way people get informed nowadays. As a result, an online version of the magazine would be easier for students to access than its printed form. It would also make the magazine available to parents and other people in the community. So, let's highlight a few keywords here. Internet, right? Online version, easier for students to access than its printed form. Okay, meaning that it is an an, an e-magazine or e-book, uh, a digital version of a book or or, or a magazine. Yeah, because it's comparing this, the digital version, with the printed form, meaning that the physical magazine. 
It would also make the magazine available to parents and other people in the community. Make the magazine available to everyone, meaning that access accessible. Lah. Okay, so when we look at these keywords, uh, what do we see? Which one is the most suitable heading for the second one? Is it student involvement? Is it becoming digital? Is it conclusion or is it new features? It could be new features, but becoming digital is more specific because it says that online version, easier to access, internet and availability to parents. So becoming digital. It's talking about the magazine should be in a digital form so that people can access it online. So number two, the correct heading is becoming digital. Okay, now number three, the third paragraph. A large majority of the students believe that shine in the dark should have more variety. Okay, let's highlight the keyword, more variety. For example, discussion forums, chat rooms, and a place for students to publish their projects and artwork are just a few ideas of what could be added to the online version of the magazine. More variety. More variety here means lebih pelbagai. Pelbagai apa? Pelbagai apa? For example, discussion forums, chat rooms, a place for students to publish their projects and artwork. Okay, these are what we call features. Um, ciri-ciri ataupun bahagian, sections of the magazine. So, the most suitable heading for the third paragraph is is it student involvement, new features or conclusion? Yes, new features. New. Pengalalan variety-variety yang terbaru, more variety. The introduction of new features. So, the heading for the third paragraph is new features. Okay, now number four. Last but not least, more students should be involved in all stages of the publication progress. More students should be involved in the stages of the publication pro pro process. For example, when deciding on the topics, when writing up the articles or when working on the design. Okay, deciding on the topics, writing up articles and designs, working on the design. If we go online, a lot of students from ICT classes would be motivated to volunteer their help and ideas. So, which heading is the most, most suitable for the fourth paragraph? Conclusion or student involvement? Yes, student involvement. Because we've highlighted this, this keywords, more students should be involved. So, the heading is student involvement. Okay, now, so number five, we know that this is a conclusion because we are only left with this. But if you think logically, if you think logically, when we are writing the last paragraph and the first paragraph will will always be the introduction and conclusion. The last paragraph on conclusion, the first paragraph is the introduction. Okay, so let's read it anyway. To sum up, see, this is the keyword. The discourse markers, the linking words that you use to, yes, to indicate that you are summarizing your point. To sum up, sum up means summarizing, to summarize things. Okay, I believe that if the room, sorry, I believe that if the above recommendations are carried out, shine in the dark online will be a huge success. So this one is the con conclusion. So what is the suggestion? The suggestion here is to make the magazine available on line. All right, so this is the answer. Okay, now task E. The information in a report is usually presented in an impersonal 
formal way. Okay, like, like, like we've discussed before, a report is usually presented in, in, an, in a formal way, impersonal. Impersonal here means neutral. One way of doing this is by using the passive voice. Rewrite the report below in the passive voice to make it more formal and suggest an appropriate heading for each paragraph. Well, passive voice ni has some kind of similarity with uh, um, reported speech. Remember, we've learned about direct speech versus reported speech. Okay, if you've missed that lesson, you can always uh, access the lesson in the playlist that I've created for you. So basically, this is a report here. So you need to rewrite the report below in the passive voice to make it more formal and suggest an appropriate heading. Okay, so first we need to rewrite these sentences into a passive voice sentence. And second, the next one, we need to suggest a, an appropriate heading for this, for each paragraph. Okay, there are five paragraphs. All right. Now, let's do them one by one. Okay, number one. This report describes what we must do to improve the quality of the, the local TV channel, Bedford TV. Okay, let me highlight some phrase or some word. Okay, this, re this report describes what we what we must do okay notice that sorry remember that in the uh, instruction a report is usually presented in an impersonal way impersonal here i said just now was um, neutral so it should not be personal when you use pronoun like we it sounds the sentence sounds uh personal right like you are talking to uh, to your friend making this sentence not formal so we must eliminate the pronoun here so how do we do that okay let's try okay bear in mind that this is just uh, a suggested answer you may have your own sentence your, your own answer but this is one of the way you can write a passive voice sentence by eliminating the pronouns, okay, making it impersonal, neutral, not personal, okay. Let's try to write the sentence, okay. This report describes what we must do, okay. Let's start the sentence here, like this. This report describe what eliminate this must be done to To improve the the quality of the local TV channel, comma, what's the name of the TV channel? Bedford TV. So, what's the difference? Let's highlight. The difference between the first sentence and our sentence is this, in this part. Must be done. Okay. So, this, the second sentence that we've, we've wrote just now is more formal and impersonal. Okay, neutral and not personal because there's no pronoun.
Okay, now, what is the most suitable heading for the first paragraph? Like we discussed before. Hmm? Yes, usually the first paragraph is the introduction. All right. Now, let's move on to the second paragraph. To start with, we must do something about the long commercial breaks. We need to limit them considerably. Commercial breaks here means eklan. Okay, let's rewrite the first part. To start start with okay eliminate this something must be done about the long commercial commercial Hold up, I'm going to rewrite this. Commercial break. Okay. We need to limit them. So, change this sentence, the second sentence, into a passive voice. It's going to sound like this. The commercial breaks need to be limited considerably. Okay, so this, right? This uh, pronoun is referring to the commercial breaks with S, meaning that more than one. So we have to use them. Okay, uh, when we are referring to a lot of things, a lot of things, we need to use the pronoun them and they. It does not refer to a person or a living thing. It does, but when it refer to things, we can use they and they or, or them, okay? Especially when it is more than one, lah, they or them, but if it is just singular, you can use it. So, this is uh, this is the object. Object. When we want to bring this pronoun in front of the in the beginning of the sentence, okay, it becomes a subject. So, when it becomes a subject, it will be it will be it needs to be changed into this they, okay. They need to be limited can see terribly. I know I said uh, we can't use pronoun uh, in the passive voice, but this in this case yes it is a pronoun but it does not refer to a person or a living things right so since this is referring to things right the commercial breaks then we can use it right? we here refers to us and this we here also refer to us when it refer to us when it refer to the writer then it becomes personal in a report, it should not become personal. It should become impersonal. So that is why we cannot use we. But they we can use because this they refers to the commercial breaks. I hope you understand that. Okay. If you have any question, don't be shy to ask me. So what is the best heading for the second paragraph? So to choose the best heading, we need to understand what the 
paragraph is talking about. So, what do you think this paragraph is talking about? Okay. Let's reread it again. To start with, we must do something about the long commercial breaks. We need to limit them considerably. So, what is what is this paragraph talks about? It talks about yeah, commercial breaks. Let's write it down. Commercial breaks. Uh, All right, now let's do number three. In addition, we should add more variety to the daily program. Specifically, people have asked for more entertainment programs. Okay, let's pick the heading first. What is this paragraph is all about? We should add more variety to the daily program. Specifically, people have asked for more entertainment programs. So this paragraph is talking about the daily program. So um, I think it is either more variety or daily program. You can pick either one of these as the heading. So I want to daily program so the heading for the third paragraph is daily program now let's change rewrite this sentence into a passive voice sentence okay let's begin with the first one in addition in addition Okay, more variety should be added to uh, to be added to the day program. Okay, the second sentence specifically specifically people have asked for more entertainment programs okay eliminate this making it sound personal more okay start from here more entertainment programs have been asked all right so there you go this is the passive sentence for number three okay so let's move on to number four finally we should broadcast a special news report with local news only once a day, we will attract new viewers that way. So, what do you think is the best heading for this paragraph? Broadcast a special news report with local news once a day. Special news. So, I think the best heading for this paragraph is special news. So let's write it down here. Special news. Okay, please note that this heading is not necessarily yours, but you can have your own heading. You can write down your own heading, but make sure your heading is relatable to the paragraph given here. Okay, now let's uh, rewrite these sentences into its passive form. Okay, the first one. Finally, we should broadcast a special news report. Okay, finally, a special news report. Okay, start your sentence with this. Finally, a special with local 
news only eliminate this should be broadcasted should be should be broadcasted and then this one once a day okay the second sentence we eliminate we will attract new viewers that way new viewers viewers will be uh, attracted that way all right okay number five all right so number five is the final paragraph the last paragraph so without having to read this paragraph here what can we put what can we put what can we write as the heading as usual when you write the last paragraph should be the conclude conclusion okay now let's uh, rewrite this sentence into its passive form to sum up if we carry out the suggestions I have made, we will improve the quality of Bedford TV considerably. Okay, now let's transform this sentence to sum up. If the suggestions... made are care carried out the quality of Bedford TV will be improved considerably all right so there you go <clears throat> that's our passive sentences all right now let's move on to the next task which is task F Read the writing task below and discuss the questions that follow in pairs or group. So basically when So because you are not with a partner or in a in your in a group, so you are going to do this on your own, all right? All right, okay, let's do this together. Your teacher has asked you to write a report about your classroom and suggest ways in which you could make it more pleasant. Let's underline the keywords first. So who asked you to write a report? Your teacher. Your teacher asked you to write a report about what? About your classroom. And she or, she or he also asked you to suggest ways suggest okay make suggestions of ways in which you could make it more pleasant make it more pleasant make what more pleasant make your classroom more pleasant all right now let's try to answer this question number one think about your classroom what two or three features do you want to focus on so if i were to write this report and this is my classroom that I'm talking about. I want to focus on the um, color of the classroom. Also, it's comfort. And also, store storage. You know when... Um, 
Uh, usually, la, in our typical classroom setting, we don't really have uh, a place or a locker to store our things, our belongings. So, I want to focus on that feature. First is the color of the classroom. Second is the comfort. Probably, you know, we could have a chair. No, no, not, not a chair. Like a lounge area, you know, with uh, bean bag or... or a rocking chair or maybe that's too much but you know it's possible and also maybe we could put some life plants inside mm. so these are the three things that I would like to focus on three features you probably have your own answer or your own suggestion or opinion okay you can uh, write your own answer and Give your own suggestions. And then let's answer number two. What heading would you use for each of the features you have chosen? So for the color, I would call it color, colorway. And for the comfort, I would call it um, lounge area. And for the storage, I'll, I would call it locker. Yeah, locker. Locker area. Or storage area. Okay. Alright, now number three. What specific suggestions do you have to make about each of these features? For the colorway, I would suggest more of a cool tone cool or neutral not cooler neutral yeah neutral neutral color and for the lounge area i would like to to have live plants and also mm, comfortable comfortable sofa and for the okay I'm gonna write here because we don't have much space for the local area uh, Corner, storage corner lah. Call it storage corner. What's wrong with this pen? Storage. Storage corner. Okay. So these are just my suggestions, okay? Uh, you can have your own answer. There is no right or wrong answer for this one. Okay, now let's move on to ne the next task. Task G. Now write your report using your ideas from the activity above. Where is the activity? This one. Huh. Write your own report using the points that you've come up with from this task. Okay. Before you begin to write, let's look at the plan. Okay, the format of a, of a report. So when writing a report, follow the plan below. Okay. Write the following at the top. Two. To whom are you writing this report to? To your teacher in this task, specifically to your class teacher. Then from, <clears throat> write down your name. The subject is the title of the report. For example, for this one, let's write um, classroom renovation. For example, you can have your own uh, uh, answer. Okay. Okay, the first part is the introduction. State what the report is about. Use phrases like, the aim or purpose of this report is to blah, 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 blah. And this is a report on what your classroom. Uh, this report describes or focuses on or deals with your classroom environment at the moment. And these are the suggestions that blah, 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 blah. Right. Those are just examples, okay? You can look at the sample report before this 
to guide you when writing your own report. Alright. The next part is the main part. In the main part, you need to have two to four paragraphs. Okay. In the main part, you should give information and expand on the points you want to make. These are the points. Okay. These are just, just the general features. And then you go uh, into specific on what are you going to talk about based on what you have mentioned in the first part. And then in the third question, the third part, you go in more, much, much more specific into the, the details that you put here. Okay, last one, write your conclusion. In your conclusion, you need to state your overall impression or opinion about your about your, the purpose of your report. Okay, in your case, the purpose of your report is to report on your classroom condition and then giving suggestions on ways that you could make, you could make it more pleasant. Okay. So, you can use phrases like all in all. This is a discourse marker. Eh? All in all, to sum up on the whole, in conclusion, in my opinion, from my point of view. So, these phrases must be in the beginning of the sentence, usually in the beginning of the paragraph. Let's look at the example. This, to sum up, right? This is the beginning of the sentence. So, according to the sample report, you need to have one, two, three, four, five, five paragraphs. So one introduction, one, two, three, three uh, main part or the body, and then five, con so, sorry, and then one conclusion in total five paragraphs. Okay. Remember, this is the format for report for your, during your examination. If you are asked to write a report, this is the format. You need to have the name of the person you're writing this to okay in your class test out is your class teacher and then from your name the writer of the report and then the subject the subject is the topic or the center of the report in your case probably classroom okay your, your own classroom okay so if you have any question do not be shy to ask me um, please do task let me highlight task E and also task G in your E1. For task E, you just need to write down the answer. For example, number one, introduction and write down the sentence. Number two, commercial breaks and then write down the sentences. Alright. Oh, before we forgot, let's read the tips when writing a report. First, keep in mind who you are writing the report for and why so that you write in an appropriate style. Formal if you are writing it for a superior or semi-formal if you are writing it for a peer group. Number sec and then second, choose three or four of your ideas and organize them into separate paragraphs for every major point. Number three, use headings to indicate what topic each paragraph focuses on. And uh, the last one, present the information in an impersonal, formal way. One way of doing this is by using passive voice. So, for example, for my for my uh, ideas just now, um, 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 heading. Okay, so I I should have three paragraphs, three main part, right? Three bodies. One, two, three. And these are the headings. The first heading is colorway. The second heading is lounge area. And the third heading is local area. But these are just my suggestion. You could have your own idea. Alright. So, uh, that's all for today. I'll see you guys again during our next class. And as usual, please submit your, S Sorry, submit your report before 3pm today. Bye-bye. Take care. Stay safe.